Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to lecture 7 of taxation and the topic is property income. One of the non-savings income. Now, here we are going to focus on property income, premiums, furnished holiday lettings, rent a room relief, practice objective test questions and summary. Now, for the purpose of your examination, you have to deal with the following. Okay. First one, property business pro profit. Either it could be from the rent that you are collecting or the leases if your property is leased. Next, premium that is received on the grant of a short lease. Okay. Then any profit that arises from the commercial, please see to it that it's commercial not residential commercial letting of furnished holiday accommodation what is this furnished holiday accommodation we are going to go through it when we go to that part okay first we are going to finish with what constitutes of a property business how do you assess the premium and the third will be furnished holiday accommodation all of this separately comes under property income okay then rental income that you have received for example if you are giving a room as a rent to someone you are getting a rent that also comes under property income and here for rental income specifically for rental income there is a relief that is known as rent a room scheme okay in taxation where you are going through various types of tax we are also going to go through various types of reliefs that is given okay now Starting with property income, how do you assess property income? You assess property income, income less expenses arising in the tax year. Okay, that means any of your net income arising from 6th of April 2022 to 5th of April 2023 <coughs> will be your property income. Okay, now. The method that is used for property income is cash basis. We have gone through cash basis in my previous lecture, self-employment income. Okay, you can watch that lecture to know what is this cash basis. That is based on cash received and cash paid, not accrual basis. But cash basis is not in for all the situations. It is the accrual basis that is there for every situation. Cash basis only comes from limited situations. Okay. So, what if you let more than one property? Okay, then what do you have to do? You have to aggregate the net income from all your property and expenses from all your property. So, deduct your aggregate income with expenses and calculate the property income. Except one thing, that is furnished holiday lettings. Any income and expenses from this furnished holiday lettings, you should ignore. Don't put it under this okay that is a separate topic now the rules for property income received by a company is different to an individual we are still in the individual okay we haven't touched company yet but when we go to company there you will know the differences how property income received will be the what are the rules okay so, for your exam, okay, in your taxation exam, you have to use cash basis, okay. Property income, whether for individuals or partnership, you have to use cash basis unless the question says that is the accrual basis. Now, cash basis, very easy, cash received minus cash paid, okay. So you first calculate rent income that is received, deduct expenses and get the accessible income. And rental income and related expenses are deductible on a receipt and a paid basis. Okay, so you don't have to see to which period the income and expenses relates. It's, it's irrelevant. Then, 
property income cash basis allowable deduction. <coughs> How for any type of income we have some deductions. For employment income we had, for self-employment we had. Same way for property income also we have some deductions. Okay. Generally, whatever we have studied in the trading income, okay, we have gone through some rules to deduct expenses from trading income. It's the same for the property income. These are the main rules. Okay. First, you take allowable expense. Any expenses allowable, you can deduct. Okay. In my previous lecture, we told that expenses that has been incurred wholly exclusively necessarily for the purpose of trade. Here, wholly exclusively necessarily for the purpose of property. Only change the word from trade to property. Okay. The rule is same. So, for example, here, these are some allowable expense you can deduct like insurance because for property we need insurance right then agent fee yes and other management expenses you can deduct repairs you can deduct because property and all we have to repair very often then you might get that property by taking a loan so on that loan you have to pay interest that is allowable but it should be a non-residential property either you are acquiring it or to improve whatever the reason is if you are paying interest on loan it's allowable but it should be a non-residential property it can't be a residential property for residential property we have other rules now next relief if you are spending anything before your property business starts you are going to get some relief how we have pre-trading expenditure rule same way we have for property income also relief now if the property is occupied let's say for the part of the tax here what do you do any expenses relating to the private use are not allowable expenses remember if the owner is occupying that property for part of the year okay and any expenses is for the private use that private use part is not allowable expense and there are some special rules relating to capital expenditure for property business okay now let's do one question illustration one you have to calculate property income okay so first time they have let the property on 1st july 2022 the rent was 5000 is paid quarterly in advance on first stop demand now allowable expenses is 200 in december 2022 relating to redecoration following up burst pipe and 400 in may 2023 related to repair work which was completed in march 2023 remember property income is cash basis not accrual basis okay so now keeping that in mind okay rent received you start with the rent received how much it's 5000 right check the date date is very important it is the first of the month you have paid in advance you have paid in advance so it first of the month means it will fall in 1st April 2023, which is before the tax year end. So, 5000. Next, allowable expense. There are two expenses redecoration and repairs. Okay. For redecoration, tell me. Redecoration, they themselves told it's allowed. Okay. And it was paid in December 2022. So you can deduct 200. What about repairs? You have paid this in May 2023. If you go by accrual basis, 
you can write it okay but see this is cash basis if you go by accrual basis you can say because it relates to march 2023 the 400 payment but you have paid in may 2023 after the tax year so 400 will not come it will be zero okay so when you deduct it's 4800 this is your property income so now we are moving to residential property finance costs for residential property okay owners of residential property who live in their own property they do not get the tax relief for the mortgage cost okay whether it is any expenses whether it is the interest or the loan they don't get but tax relief is given on let residential property finance cost at the basic rate 20 percent if you're letting your residential property then any finance cost on that you will be given tax relief up to 20 percent which is the basic rate okay so you deduct this from the taxpayers income tax liability and no part of loan finance cost is allowed as an expense of the property business you don't deduct it from the finance cost you just deduct the 20 percent from the income tax liability that's how you claim the deduction now this special rule applies to loans to acquire, improve, or repair a residential let property. And also acquire loans to acquire equipment or assets used for the residential letting business, not only to for the residential property. Any asset you want to buy for it, any equipment you want to buy on the loan, you will get that relief. Now, this finance costs restricted includes interest payable also right we told right up to 20 percent you can deduct the finance cost for letting residential property it includes interest payable also as well as any cost of obtaining the finance like bank fees so interest payable bank fees everything the restriction is 20 percent note that this rules do not apply to company or qualifying furnished holiday accommodation later we we are going to go through qualifying furnished holiday accommodation they have separate rules even though they fall under the property income okay see property income is like an umbrella it's a big topic it's a broad topic inside that we have small small areas like this leases lease premium then furnished holiday accommodation then rent a room like that okay so and interest related to a non-residential property will also not come here okay such as leased office or a warehouse is still fully deductible from rental income as an expense of letting the business if it's a non-residential property then any interest on that you can deduct from rental income because it's not residential commercial properties no problem residential property there are more strict rules because it's not for the business purpose but if you are letting a residential property also you can deduct finance costs up to 20 percent now we'll do a question illustration two you have to calculate income tax liability after reliefs okay we have done this when i was going through lecture three and four now so adam owns a residential property lets out received rent of fifteen thousand. And these are the expenses, agents fee, insurance, guarantee cost, and interest cost on loan to acquire property. Trading income is 42,000. Bank interest income is 800. What do you have to do? The minute you are asked to calculate income tax liability, remember the table, the four columns. If dividend is not there, then three columns, non-savings, savings, and total. So let's do that. You have to categorize the income and tax. So let's quickly do that. okay looking at this we know there are two types of income non savings and savings and total okay first trading income trading income is 42000 which comes under non savings 
So in the total also we will put 42,000. Next, property income. You see, in my previous lecture, we went through this trading income in detail. That's why you need to watch my previous lecture, income from self-employment. Okay, there whatever you calculate, it is known as trading income. This we are going to take property income, which we are going to write here. Okay, property income. You need to do a working here. Why? You have been given the rent and the cost. You need to know what you can deduct and what you can't deduct. So that's why keep a W, which shows that you have done a working to arrive at property income. You can't take it from the question straight away. How you have taken trading income. <coughs> Next, bank interest of 800. You can see here, right? Bank interest is a savings income, which is 800. So straight away, you can write 800 here. Okay. Then the total. Now, leave some space. We'll go down and we'll calculate the property income. Okay. Okay. Maybe this side will take. You need to label the working property income. So you start with rent. Rent is 15,000. Rent received. Then you deduct your expenses. Can we deduct agent's fee? Yes, we can deduct. Can we deduct insurance? Yes, we can deduct insurance. Can we deduct gardener's cost? This is a residential property you are letting out. Gardener's cost thing. Yes, you can deduct. What about interest? Interest cost on loan to acquire property. Can you? Think. This is a residential. Yes, you can. You can deduct 20% from the income tax. You can't deduct it from the cost. So, no. Okay. So we'll take all the cost. Agent's fees, AF, 1,000. Next, insurance, 1,500. Gardener's cost, GC, 1,300. You have to show this as zero. Interest, zero. Okay. The final answer is 11,200. This is your property income. This you need to put here in the table. Under non-savings, So when you get like this, get the total, total income. Here is 53,200, 800, 54,000. What do you need to deduct? What do you need to deduct? Personal allowance. Don't forget your previous lecture. We started our tax only with this. From where you are going to deduct first? Non-savings. So personal allowance, how much? 12,570. It's fixed this year. I hope you didn't forget, right? From total. Then, what is the result? Taxable income. How much? 40, 630, 800, 41, 430. That's not enough. You have to calculate income tax now. First, Looking at this, you can say he's a higher rate taxpayer. So first, we'll charge the first thirty-seven seven hundred. That is the basic limit up to twenty percent. Thirty-seven seven hundred into twenty percent, which is seven five four zero. Next, what is the additional? See from here, if thirty-seven seven hundred goes, what's an balance 2930 into 40% because that is the higher rate 1172 from non savings you have taxed everything basic and higher rate now let's go to the savings savings can we get the starting rate of savings no because a non saving itself is more than 5000 what about the nil savings nil rate band can we get it yes we definitely can get it because he's a higher rate taxpayer how much up to 500. 
So up to 500 of savings will be taxed as 0%. Savings nil rate bad. So from 800, 500 goes, you are left with 300, which will be taxed at 40%, 120. So if you add all the four, the result is 8832. That's not enough. You have reliefs. What is it? Remember I told you, you can deduct this as an expense, but you will get 20% relief on it because it's for residential property. So up to 20% of 7,500 you can deduct now. So less, it's a relief. Basic rate tax relief on property interest income. Relief, okay? 20% of 75,000. Not 75,000, sorry, 7,500. 1,500. 7,332. This is your income tax liability. Okay. Capital expenditure. So for capital expenditure, okay, when you're using cash basis, there is no difference between capital and revenue expenses. Okay. So expenditure on plant and machinery, except cars. For cars, we have separate rules. Okay. Ex except cars used in property business is an allowable deduction when paid. Okay. But this general rule does not apply to cars and assets that is provided for use in residential property like furniture, TV. Why? Because for that, we have a separate relief known as replacement domestic item relief. That is when you want to replace any of the item used in the residential property, like you want to replace your carpet or furniture or TV, you are going to get a relief. But it's only for residential property. That's why you don't get to deduct expenses from residential property. You can't claim. Okay. But expenditure on plant and machinery, you can deduct. Except for cars and residential property, general rule will not apply. Now, capital expenditure on land and building is not an allowable deduction. Remember, on property plant and equipment it's allowed but land and building you can't deduct with the exception of some non-residential property okay in certain circumstances non-residential business may be eligible for structure and building allowance remember buildings only not land and it needs to, it needs to be non-residential Capital expenditure on land and building is not allowable. Okay. That's why you need to distinguish between capital expenditure and revenue expenditure. Capital means improvement. Revenue means repair. Repair is allowable. Improvement is not allowable. So revenue, allowable. Improvement, not allowable. Distinction. So let's go through an example to understand this better. This is just an example. Okay. Repair means you are just restoring a part of an asset, not the entire asset. For example, you are replacing the roof tiles because it was blown uh, by a storm. You are replacing it. It's a repair. Okay, it's a revenue expenditure. Next, if you are making a significant improvement to that asset beyond its original condition, it's a capital expenditure and it's not allowed. For example, you are taking off the roof and building another floor. That's a capital expenditure. Now we are moving to cars. For cars, you can claim capital allowances. Capital allowances, this capital allowance will reduce the cost of your capital car. Okay. So in this case, you can also deduct petrol, insurance, motoring cost. You can deduct. HMRC, there is an alternative method. HMRC has also approved mileage allowance. Even you can claim this instead of capital allowances. <coughs> we have already gone through HMRC's approved mileage allowance. Under which lecture? When I went through employment income. Under employment income, I went through some benefit. Under that benefit, this is one of the benefits. 
for cars when you are giving a proof mileage allowance we have already studied there okay i have repeated again for you first 10000 miles 45 pence over 10000 miles 25 pence okay so as you can see this approved mileage allowance is no different from that which is given to employ as a benefit it's the same even for the traders also under self employment income even for property income you need this now replacement domestic item relief okay for residential property you must be spending on some assets right there may be some expenses like you just can't sell the residential property like that you need furniture there you need tv there so you can't deduct all these expenses okay also capital allowances also not available for residential property i'm talking about then what's the solution you have a relief here even if you can't deduct the expenses there's some relief known as replacement domestic item relief this is available and for furnished residential okay this is a special relief furnished furnishments it has all the furnitures and everything available that special relief is replacement domestic item relief or you can also say replacement furniture relief how it works this is how it works okay you can this relief allows a deduction for the replacement not the original accusation of the domestic item provided by the landlord when you go to replace okay let's say after five years three years maybe you want to replace the furniture but remember it has to be of similar nature okay let's say you are getting a new washing machine a washing machine with a washing machine it needs to be a similar uh, asset you can't totally buy a different asset unrelated no then only you will get that replacement relief so when you are buying it replacing it on that you can deduct that that replacement will be reduced by this relief but the original cost when you bought that asset for the first time nothing is going to happen there that will remain same o only at the time of replacement you can deduct so the allowable deduction is this replacement cost minus any proceed from the disposal of the original item okay you need to remember this formula this relief is not available for furnished holiday lettings and accommodation okay why because for them there's a renter room relief we'll later go through how renter room relief works for separate items we have separate separate relief like for this we have replacement domestic item relief for furnished holiday lettings and accommodation we have renter room relief now so the replacement cost is allowed is limited to the cost of a similar item yes it's allowed but it is limited to the cost of that similar item excluding any improvement remember if there is any improvement it will not take that into account because it says excluding any improvement but any modern equivalent it will allow for example you bought a washing dryer five years back now after five years that model is no longer there a new model comes right it is similar but in the modern ways it's equivalent to that previous one but with some new things and all for example a washing machine is replaced with a washing dryer so only the cost of the replacement washing machine would qualify for this relief remember and domestic items what are domestic items like furniture household appliances like white goods carpet curtains kitchenware you can claim for this these are domestic items you can replace but remember fixtures you can't like those plant and machinery which are already there in your house like which is there in that property it is inbuilt in it you can't take it out for example boiler every residential property will be having a boiler and a radiator so it's not like if you are living in asian and a middle east country you might not get this but if you are into europe and all right there every house has this boilers and radiators it's in build there you don't have to separately purchase it why because it's very cold there those countries are very cold unlike middle east or our asian countries we don't have this we separately have to buy this but there everything is boiler so for this boilers and radiators we can't claim this replacement domestic item relief 
this it is excluded from that okay it is only for those appliances which you can which you daily use right and which you can exchange also like carpet if it got worn and torn out you can purchase a new one kitchenware after use for several years you can now replace it curtains like that but boilers and radiators you can't so now let's do questions <coughs> illustration 3 here you are supposed to calculate property income you have been given some expenses and the rent so let's read annual rent is 3600 payable monthly in advance now these are the expenses okay replacement bedroom curtains replacement of one kitchen broken kitchen unit in a fitted kitchen with a unit of similar standard insurance for the year previous is 420 dishwasher decoration redecoration now the tenant had vacated vacated the property during june 2022 without having paid the rent for june Amal was unable to trace the defaulting tenant but managed to let the property to a new tenant from 1st of July 2022. New tenant paid a security deposit of 800. The old bedroom curtains had no disposal value. Dishwasher had not previously been provided in the property. Amal drove 120 miles in her car in relation to property business during year. Claims approved mileage allowance. It's a lot of work that is required here. So how do you start? It's very easy to get panic. Start with rent received. This is a cash basis. Property income is cash basis. So rent received. Then all the expenses that we have paid, we have to deduct. Okay. So let's quickly do that. So let's start with the rent received. <coughs> now, remember rent received you have you are paying monthly you have to calculate it annually okay and you have not received a rent for one month that is june so you can't tax the june you can't tax exactly 12 months how many months you have to take tell me just see for a minute look at the date and tell me okay see the date see then it will only be taxed for 11 months this 3600 will only be taxed for 11 months because for june you are not paid but you might say that you have received a deposit what about the security deposit see the security deposit okay at the end of the lease it will be paid back it will be returned to the tenant so you can't tax this you can't this is not a taxable income you can't tax the security deposit at the end of the term you will pay back this to the tenant so 3600 into 11 months how much 3300 next that's the only income now one by one we'll deal with the expenses less expenses so we'll start in the order given replacement bathroom curtains okay replacement bedroom curtains i'm using short form yes okay think 150 can we The old bedroom curtains had no disposal value. They have not given you any sale value. Okay. So you can claim this 150. You can deduct. Okay. This is an allowable deduction. It's allowed because it comes under replacement cost of domestic item in a residential property. It's a domestic item, bedroom curtain. So 150. You can deduct. next repair to kitchen units
what about it how much is it 275 can we yes it is even this also same reason 275 next third one insurance insurance is also allowable we went through the list only up to the amount you have paid okay so 480 you can deduct then what's next dishwasher okay dishwasher the dishwasher was not pro not previously provided in the property it's a capital expenditure you have bought it for the first time you are not doing any repair to the existing item so this 380 is not allowable okay it's not no you can claim a capital allowance for it because it's an expenditure on an asset also there is no relief for this okay you will not get any replacement for dishwasher under the replacement domestic item relief so it is zero then what's next redecoration what about redecoration this is when did you pay see may 2023 can you claim this this year you can't it doesn't fall in this tax year it falls in the next tax year so this is zero next the last one mileage allowance ma you can how much 120 miles we have dropped okay so it will be at what rate it will be at 45 pence because it's less than 10,000 miles so 120 into 0 0.45 45 pence means 0 0.45 pounds 54 you can deduct so the total is 2 3 4 1 this is your property income okay now test your understanding one calculate property income is the same some income is given some expenses is given you have to decide allowable or not allowable and get it now acquire two residential property okay so this is about two property one is property a the other one is property b property a is unfurnished property b is furnished annual rent is 4000 annual rent is 5000 here payable quarterly in advance payable quarterly in arrears so these are the expenses and these are the expenses in respect of property B. Now, for property B, tenants were late in paying the amount due on 31st March 2020. This was not received until 15 April 2023. Now, <coughs> these are the expenses. Here we have repairs to roof, interest on loan to acquire property, repainting exterior in property B. Letting expenses, paid to agent, insurance, cost of furniture, cost of soft furnishings. Okay. So, how do you deal with this? Do we add all? No. Keep property A and B separate. Okay. So, first we'll do for property A. Because one is furnished, one is unfurnished. If both had the similar characteristics, you could have add both. So first for property A, rent received. Okay, how much? 4,000. Then expenses. You have to see what expenses you can uh, claim. Repair to roof. Can you take 1,600? It's a repair. Yes, you can take. What about interest on loan to acquire property? Can you take it? This. 
No, you can't take, but you can claim 20% deduction when you calculate tax. Repainting exterior, this also you can take. You always have to look at the day is whether it falls in the tax or not. You have paid and they are re uh, revenue expenditure, not capital expenditure. So you can take. So deduct. Roof repairs 1600 and deduct 845 repainting exterior and get your profit 1555. Okay, this is for property A. Simple property B also. Okay. will do okay rent received so here also rent received see here pay cotton in advance okay this one annual rent of 5000 payable quarterly in arrears and rent has not been paid amount due on 31st march 2023 was paid on 15th april and this one you are paying quarterly in areas how do you calculate this like how you have taken 4000 straight away with property a property b you can't do like that <coughs> see they have from 1st of June, you have to take quarterly. How many months? Three months, right? One quarter, you need to divide it by four. So 5,000 divide by four. Okay. This is quarterly in advance A. That's why there was not an issue. But this is in arrear. You have to see the cash basis. The amount which you have not paid, you can't take. And you have started for June. So for how many, how many quarters you can pay? Think. In a quarter, there are four months. Okay. You have to divide it by 4. If it was monthly, we would have divided the answer by 12. And then we calculated based on number of months. This is quarterly. When it comes quarterly, students get confused. You have to divide it by 4 whenever it's quarterly. And take into how many quarters you have paid. Okay. So June, starting from June, July, June, July, August. Sorry. First let on 1st of July. Okay. You have to calculate from 1st of July. So, July, August, September. September, you will be making one payment. October, November, December. In December, this is in September. Okay. This is in December. You will be making another quarterly payment. First quarter is in September because you have let it on 1st of July. So, July, August, September. Okay. July whole month, August whole month, September. So, 30th September. Then 31st December the second so jan feb march they told for 31st march 2023 for this quarter they haven't paid so how many quarters did you pay only for september and december two quarters you paid so because it's quarterly you need to divide it by four in a quarter there are four months that's why so here when you are taking it this is why you have to be very careful whether something is in area or in advance advance no issue but if it's area you might you didn't pay it's cash basis so 5000 divide by 4 because quarter if it was monthly then you would have divided by 12 now into 2 because for two quarters only you paid september december for march you didn't pay which is 2500 now we'll deduct the expenses okay remember not everything is allowable letting expenses paid to agent can we take 40 yes it is allowable 
insurance can be yes insurance also we get what about the cost of furniture and cost of soft furnishing Tell. you can't cost of furniture is a capital expenditure cost of soft furnishing capital expenditure you can't deduct you understand so only the first two you can deduct which is 40 and 585 insurance and you get 1875 so what do you do property income you add this two okay you add this two 1555 5, 5 plus 1875 5 equals to 3430 this is your property income okay remember even though you we have left this thing out here interest on loan to acquire property this 420 you will get a relief when we calculate income tax liability but because this question did not ask you to calculate income tax liability we can leave it but if we have to deduct it how much will deduct 420 into 20 percent 84 you will deduct this from interest tax liability okay and what about the two things which we have ignored cost of furniture and cost of soft furnishing they are not allowable deduction okay next is accrual basis all this while we have been going through cash basis does not mean we can't prepare property income based on accrual basis we can also prepare on accrual basis okay so now we'll see how it differs when we calculate property income using accrual basis compared to what we have studied which is cash basis under accrual basis okay your property income receipt should exit 150,000 okay it should in your exam it should only be used if the question tells you to do otherwise the general rule is the moment your property income receipt exits 150,000 pounds you automatically you have to use accrual basis okay under accrual basis the difference is between rental income and related expenses okay rent receivable and expenses payable if a tenant leaves without paying the outstanding rent under cash basis it will never be taxed but under accrual basis the amount receivable is still taxable okay amount receivable even though you have not received it it is taxed but the outstanding amount that you are owing to someone this can be deducted as an expense so the irrecoverable debt is referred to as an impairment loss in the exam according to accrual basis in cash basis will not have this irrecoverable debt concept only under accrual basis okay now the main difference is between the expenditure on property expenditure on plant and machinery used in a property business okay is not an allowable deduction from income but capital allowances are available instead other rules concerning allowable expenditure including replacement domestic item relief restriction of the finance cost for residential property will operate in the same way as it was for cash basis we have already gone through that that means 20 percent of the finance cost you can deduct from income tax liability and replacement domestic item for residential property whether under cash or accrual is the same so now let's do questions illustration four here we are supposed to calculate property income using accrual basis so he has let it out on 1st of july 2022 okay rent was 5000 now paid quarterly in advance 
the allowable expenses is 200 relating to work done in November 2022 and 400 even though it was paid in May 2023 the work it was related to a work completed in March 2023 see this is a cruel basis doesn't matter when you pay or when you receive the cash it could be any time it could be after the tax year but the period whether it is relating to the current tax year or not okay so here rent received it's a cruel basis okay 5000 so for how many months july august september october november december january february march nine months okay 5000 divided by 12 into nine months which would be equal to 3750 see up to march okay so it's july to march calculate yourself and check it's nine month the payment which will be on 1st of april okay the april month's payment it does not come in this tax year april may june it will be in the next tax year the following tax year 2023-24 okay so only up to march you can take the payment you can't take the month of april 3750 next allowable expenses 200 will be allowable because the payment is in december even it is relating to a work done in november which falls in this tax year coming to 400 if you can recall earlier we didn't take this 400 why it was cash basis we paid in may 2023 which does not come in the current tax year but this time we can take because it is related to a work completed in march 2023 so we'll take 400 this time it's allowable under actual basis so these are the small differences which you have to know between cash and accrual basis so the property income is 3150 next is property business losses if you are incurring a loss in a property business what do you do this happens when your rent that you have received is less than your expenses then it's a loss okay now very rarely a land owner just owns one property most of the time more than one property only a landlord will own so if that's the case then you aggregate the total okay the profit of all the properties the losses of all the properties and then you calculate one income for the tax year from all your property okay so let's say you are making a loss in one property you can offset that loss by a property from another uh, by a profit from another property you can offset this is the first way you can uh, provide a loss relief right this is the instant solution next let's say you are not able to do that okay let's say if you have calculated aggregated there is an overall loss on all property then you don't have to pay any tax because the property income for that year will be nil okay after that if there is any unrelieved loss let's say you're not able to cover the loss loss is more than the profit that unrelieved loss will be carried forward indefinitely indefinitely means there is no full stop you can't say you will carry forward for five years ten years no forever there's no time limit until it gets offset entirely so unrelieved loss is carried forward indefinitely and it is offset against first available property business profit remember not any profit that profit has to be from property business only you can offset why did i emphasize on this because if it's a trading loss there is another rule for trading loss sometimes you can set it up against all profit all types of profit sometimes specifically that type of profit like property income so if it's property loss only property profit only you can offset now let's do two questions on this setting of of property business losses before we go on to our next topic of this lecture that is leases with this we have finished our property income so we are going to do now illustration five and six okay here we have three property with income and expenses and we need to calculate the property income or loss okay so we shall quickly do that okay 
and we have for two different tax years 2021 22 and 22 23 remember when you are setting up expenses against income it needs to be in the same tax year you can't put in different tax years okay so for example here this you can deduct from this only same this you can deduct from this only because same tax year okay so when you are preparing this it needs to be in separate separate the tax years so let's do that okay 2020 okay 1 2 3 total income expense and loss or profit okay so income 1200 expenses uh 1850 so it's a loss of 650 next 450 600 it's a loss of 150 again then 3 150 2800 this time it's a profit of 350 4800 5250 over our losses 450 if you add this horizontally and vertically it should be 450 okay now see the overall is 450 right so you will be you will not be taxed this year your property income will be zero it will be assessed as zero okay and this is the loss carried forward 450 okay is your loss carried forward now we'll see whether we can set this off in 2022 23 you need to follow the chronological order first first tax year then the later tax year 2022 23 okay income expense profit or loss if it's loss it's in bracket so this one this time 800 minus 900 like that so 1 2 3 total 800 minus 900 it is 100 loss 1750 950 800 profit Two five five zero two thousand seven hundred. It's a loss of one fifty. Five thousand one hundred. The total, okay. Five fifty. It's a profit of five fifty. Remember, this year you are making fifty. Last year it was a four fifty loss. So bring it forward and set it off this year. Less loss. Broad forward. How much? Four fifty. You can set up the entire four fifty because you are. Profit this year is greater than your loss of the last year, so you will be left with hundred property income this year. This will be charged to your income tax. Okay, now illustration six. You have been given some property number, rent received, insurance. Okay, he has owned six houses. now we'll see the requirement a and b explain how relief for property business loss can be obtained you need to explain and next is calculate the property business loss so when you explain that means you need to write also okay and when you calculate you calculate so tell me how how are you going to answer for a i'm giving you one minute to think one or two minutes
Remember the loss relief? We told automatic loss relief. See, this company is having six property. So it's very easy that even if one or two properties making losses, some other properties might be having profit. So set off the losses of one property with the profit of another. Instant relief you will get. Then what's next? That is automatic loss relief. Then if if you see the aggregate that it's a loss, then you can carry forward this loss indefinitely. So one is against each other. Okay. <coughs> The other relief is you carry forward indefinitely and set it off against the first available property, business, profit. Okay. These are the two reliefs. Now, coming to part B, property business loss, which we need to calculate. You start with rent received. Remember, it's cash basis. Okay. Default position. Because question, unless the question says you, other basis, otherwise it's cash basis. So we need to read a little bit of here. Okay, when you're taking off the rent receipt, remember, you have to add this. You have to take this, you have to take this, you have to take this, you have to take this. And you have to take this. We'll read other information to see whether anything needs to be deducted or not. Okay. You always need to read other information and then write your rent income and expenses. Okay. So here the interest premium paid for the year were five percent lower than the above figure for all the properties and were paid on first of June 2021. Five percent lower for all the property. Now Heckler employs a gardener to look after all the properties and pays him 1000 a year. This is about expenses, okay? Accountancy charges is 480. Both of these costs are allocated equally to, allocated equally to each property. Number 23 and 40. 23 and 40. Have new uh, tenancies. The cost of advertising for 10 is 50 in respect of the number 23. 50. This is for advertising in 23. And 100 for number 40. The new tenant and number 23 took over immediately after the old tenant moved out. Unfortunately, the old tenant uh, at number 40 is defaulted on rent due before the new tenant moved on and out of 350. You see, they did not pay this 350 for number 40. Included, this was included in the above rent receivable figure for the year never paid. You can't take this, you have to take this out because it's cash basis. This is why you have to read other information also. Just don't blindly add all the six figure and then put rent receipt. No, can't do that. During the year, Hackler had to replace the carpets in number 40 at a cost of 800. She also had to replace the crockery at 21 at a cost of 100. And a replacement roof for number 25 and this is the cost. All these are expenses, the rest all. No disposal possible receive in respect of any of the assets which were replaced. Then they took a loan. On each of the six properties and pays interest at 800 per year on each loan okay so now first we'll finish there is only one income what is it that is rent received so for rent received add all the six figure and deduct this 350 because this was not paid that's it that's it so the total of rent received would be Illustration 6. Ten five seventy. Okay. Now all the expenses. All the expenses. We'll start with insurance because that's the first insurance given. We have to adjust a bit for insurance. Okay. So for insurance, what do you do? Same like how we have done for rent, we'll add 280, 220, 340, 150, 150, and 140. We'll add this. Nothing they have told about insurance, okay, that they have not paid or anything like that, okay. They just told insurance premium paid for the year ended 31st May were 5% lower than the above figure for all properties and were paid on 1st of June. 2021 they were paid 
So the moment it's paid, you can deduct the total. Total of insurance is 1 to 80. Okay, we'll see the other cost. Next, the gardener. Next is gardener. How much? 1200. Is it a deductible expense? Yes, it is. Accountancy 480. Is it a deductible? Yes, it is deductible. They told it is allocated among the six property. No need to allocate among six property and then calculate six property separately. Why? You are taking the overall. Even if you add also, it will add up to this amount only. We are just taking, adding all together, accumulating and showing you the figure. Okay? The total. That's why. So, accountancy is allowed. What? Okay. Gardner. Accountancy. How much? 480 150 then what's next advertising there was some advertising advertising is an allowable expense but we'll see i think there are two for two property one is 50 one is 100 you see this is the advantage of highlighting something i could quickly locate to that place without searching in the text where it is in the exam also same way you have to highlight if you see any important things so 50 plus 100 150 you deduct for advertising accountants is 480 wait wait a minute i'm sorry gartner is 1200 this is 480 next two things repair and replace domestic items you have to replace some domestic items so replaced domestic item and repairs this was the two expenses how do i know because i've read it okay replace domestic item is allowable how much one is 800 i've highlighted here the other one is 100 i've highlighted the other okay the rep repairs 8600 what is it it's an allowable repair to the building okay replacement roof so you can take it does not come under domestic item that's why separately domestic item you add 800 and 100 so 900 then 8600 and when you deduct then you get a property loss of 2040 because your losses are more than your rent received ex sorry expenses so property losses 2040 what would be your property income this year? It will be zero. This year you will not be taxed anything. Whenever you have a property loss, no matter however much the amount is, property income is always zero. No tax. That's it. Now we are going to discuss premium that is received on short list. First, we'll go through some definitions, okay? A premium, okay, is a lump sum payment that a tenant makes to the landlord. Even this, we have to pay a tax, okay? Now, grant. Grant means when you are giving a right to someone to use your asset for a fixed period of time. Owner is known as the landlord. The person who is going to use that property is known as tenant okay now short lease short lease means lease which is less than or equal to 50 years lease which is more than 50 years is known as long lease we are not going to study long lease here because that is not taxable only short lease now income tax treatment for the premium of lease so this is taxed Okay, when a premium is received by the landlord, there is an income tax on that, which we need to pay. Now, this is how you calculate. Premium, deduct your, from your uh, lease, you deduct your premium. Lease, uh, receivable, you deduct your premium. Okay. The amount that you have received is your premium. From there, you deduct premium into 2% into N minus 1. What is it? N stands for number of year. Okay. 
that is known as property income where n is the length of your lease this will be given to you in the question okay and they will give you year ignore part of year you have to take complete years for example if they say 38 years four months okay you have to take 38 years you don't take the 38 years and four months you don't take in decimals you need to take full complete years the alternative calculation is this property income okay you will get the same answer try both the method and see the first one and this one that is premium into 51 minus n that is number of lease the length of your lease and divide by 50. now let's do question on this the formula for the leases okay premium into 51 minus n divided by 50 and also the first method are not going to be given to you in your exam you need to memorize the formula okay in fact you need to look at your uh, formula sheet what are the formulas that will be given to you in your taxation exam you should be very well aware of it okay there are a list of some formulas which is given some tax rates mileage allowances these are given some which are not given you need to definitely memorize it now so we are going to do two questions illustration seven and test understanding two after that we are going to move on to the third part of this lecture that is furnished holiday accommodation so illustration seven you have to calculate property income remember your leases also comes under property income why either you could buy the property and sell the other one is you could even lease your property that's why lease premium also comes under property income so first we'll calculate premium it's given 10,500 and it's a 21 year lease. So 10,500, 21 year lease. How you will take less 10,500 into 2%. This 2% is fixed by the way. And N minus 1, 21 minus 1. If you do like this, it would be 4,200. The total is 6,300. Now we'll see are we getting the same answer using the alternative method. Keep the 6300 here. Let's do. What is it? Premium 10,500 into n minus, sorry, 51 minus n. So 51 minus, what is n? And this question is 21. Divide by 50. You still will get 6300. In your exam, you have to use any two of the one method. Now, test your understanding two. Same. This is an 18 year list and this is the amount. Okay. So, we'll just quickly calculate it using the alternate method. 26,000 into 51 minus 18 divided by 50. How much? 17. 160 get it using the first method and see are you getting this figure or not so the third item under property income is furnished holiday lettings what is it this is commercial this is not residential purpose okay any profit that you get from a commercial letting of furnished holiday accommodation comes under property income okay so they are treated profits arose from a single and a separate trade compared to your other profits properties okay so as a result you have to keep a separate record for it see earlier we went through furnished residential property right those are for residential now this one is like it's like you are providing an accommodation to people but it is for commercial purpose commercial letting not residential okay the reason is the rules there are some special rules for this and for the residential that's why this and residential accommodation are kept separate we finished the residential and all under that we could claim domestic replacement relief and all those things that is over now this is for commercial here we have specific rules and reliefs that apply to this kind of property 
So here also default is cash basis, like how we have used for the other property, same cash basis. So that, in a way, property income is very easy. Everything is cash basis. Doesn't matter whether it's accommodation for residential or commercial, doesn't matter. But to qualify as a furnished holiday letting, it needs to satisfy some conditions such as these are the conditions property has to be furnished without furnished it doesn't come here next should be on commercial basis that means your objective has to be to make profit third it should be available to the public for not less than 210 days a year that means more than 210 days a year should be available it should not be less than 210 days you have to be very strict with these days then we have some more conditions that is available this one actually you have to let it for 105 days at least at least that means more than 105 not less excluding periods of long term occupation long term occupation means a single person cannot stay there for more than a certain period of time consecutively that is that comes under long occupation okay what does it mean here where a taxpayer is having more than one property how do you satisfy 105 days test this 105 days test is satisfied by looking at the average number of days from all the property or the average should be at least 105 if you're having more than one property if it's one property then one property only you will see whether this 105 days uh, test is satisfied or not okay now <coughs> long term occupation means it should not be let in excess of 155 days in a year long term occupation means more than 31 consecutive days it's not one day you are keeping the other day no consecutively 31 days more than 31 days it falls under long term occupation that also when the property is let to the same person same person then it comes under long term occupation okay it is possible for the property to be let to the same person for more than 31 days but when you are aggregating the periods of long term occupation let's say there are two three people who have stayed under long term occupation so when you're aggregating all those periods of long-term occupation that should not exit 155 days the total okay now tax treatment profits that you get from this furnished holiday lettuce comes under property income only but it's just that they're treated separately from your other rental income okay you are not adding them together with your other rental property for example you have other properties from which you are collecting the rent you don't add this profit with those rent they are kept separate advantages and reliefs the advantages of doing is that you can claim for a tax relief if you have a furnished holiday lettings and if you are getting a profit on this you can claim for a tax relief for a pension scheme contribution why because the profit that you earned through fhl furnished holiday lettings this are treated as relevant earning to claim relief now you see the advantage if you would have added this profit with your other rental property income you will not get this relief only the profit from furnished holiday lettings are eligible to claim tax relief for pension scheme contribution. That's why you keep it separate so that your tax reduces. Next advantage, finance cost. That means your interest on loan. This you can deduct as a business expense only when you keep this separate. Because this furnished holiday letting profits are known as a separate trade for the land. That's why you can claim finance cost as a business expense for it there is no basic rate tax relief restriction we earlier went through this the 20 percent of interest you can deduct as a tax relief from income tax liability 
here fully you can deduct that restriction is no longer here but for residential yes residential property there is a basic rate tax relief that is 20% up to 20% finance cost you can deduct from your income tax liability but when you come to furnish holiday lettings this is for commercial reasons full finance cost you can deduct as a business expense you see the advantage third advantage capital gain tax rolled over relief we still didn't go through ctd tax that's why you will not understand what is this rolled over relief for time being just know you don't need to know the meaning okay when we go there maybe perhaps you can come and revisit this you will understand this it's like briefly i will explain you not exactly it's like when you buy an asset capital asset okay and when you want to buy replace that asset and buy another asset you want to sell this car and buy another car when you're buying another car you will get some tax relief so when you're selling this car you will you don't have to pay tax immediately when you're selling it when you're buying the other asset you can claim some relief from the purchase cost of that new asset provided they are similar asset that is known as rolled over you are rolling it over rather than paying tax immediately now you are delaying the tax payment that comes under capital gain tax when you are buying capital assets which will study when we go through ctt tax now still we are under income tax so because when you are going in a furnished holiday lettings let's say you are purchasing it you can claim this <coughs> capital gain tax over relief then gift hold over relief there is another no word known as gift hold over relief and business asset disposal relief this is treated as a separate trait that's why business as a way of disposing this you will get a business asset disposal relief also all these are available here we'll cover this term separately no worry now this other advantages more advantages plant and machinery for plant and machinery we use cash basis okay so you can deduct any expenses that you have paid for acquiring furnitures and furnishings if it's on a coal basis you can claim capital allowances in respect of plant and machinery including furnitures and fur uh, furnishings please understand the difference cash basis you deduct the moment you paid the expenses you deduct a coal basis you claim a capital allowance so under both of this whether cash or accrual basis deductions apply instead of replacement of domestic item relief see the difference with the residential accommodation there you can't deduct you can only claim replacement of domestic item relief here you can claim both if cash basis you deduct the expense if accrual basis you claim capital allowance but you can't apply for replacement of domestic item relief here that you can do under residential accommodation this is commercial so any losses that you make here okay can only be set against the income of the same uk furnished holiday letting business not any other okay that is a uk uk fha later tax year okay there is no limit to how many years you can carry forward okay and it needs to be the same fha business not any other now we are coming this is the last part of this lecture rent a room relief when you are giving your part of a room as a rent to someone you get a relief on it okay where let's say you are living in a house okay two bedroom let's say you decided to give one bedroom as a uh, rent to your friend rent a room you're just renting a room to your friend on that you are getting a relief when at the time of the tax let's see what is it <coughs> and this also for the main residence where you are staying okay not any other house you are giving no 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 you are also staying there it's your main residence that you are giving it as a rent so if you are doing this okay if you are giving your main residence as a rent to someone on that rent also you will be charged income tax that comes as a property income but if it's from your main residence you are giving it as a rent special exemption applies what is it and even this one is also cash basis in short 
all the property income whether furnished holiday accommodation whether lease whether rent whether residential property cash basis is the default unless the question tells you do uh, the other basis okay accrual basis now so the relief is like this you have to check your gross annual rental receipt whether it's more than 7500 or not if your gross rental is 7500 or less than that you don't have to pay any tax why your income is exempt from tax isn't it a wonderful thing right but remember your limit is only up to 7500 you can increase this limit this limit can be reduced to half also how let's say you have a spouse both you and your spouse are staying there so when this relief is given it is not for your spouse and you separately 7500 each no you and your spouse together can claim up to 7500 so for you you can divide this equally this 7500 will be divided equally between you and your spouse you getting 3750 your spouse getting 3750 together makes up 7500 okay <coughs> so this is mainly for the spouses because they are the ones who stay together there in that main residence so if you want to divide that rental income divide equally between you and your spouse you can do that but then you will only get up to 3750 3750 together 7500 not separately 7500 or you could do like this one if your spouse takes the full 7500 the other one will not get anything zero okay an individual can elect to ignore this exemption also for a particular year for example if you are incurring a loss okay that flexibility is there now if it's more than 7500 individual can choose either they pay tax on that gross i mean excess more than 7500 let's say 8000 so they will pay tax on 8000 minus 7500 on that 500 that is the excess or or they can choose to be taxed in the normal way forgetting that exemption is there that means they will take all the rental income deduct all the expense and normally on that amount they'll pay tax so rent less expenses less replacement furniture relief why replacement furniture relief this is not commercial this is your main residence this is a residential property so here you can claim replacement furniture relief also that's why you can deduct this also okay so this is how you decide whether you have to elect for a rent or room relief or leave it how check whether your expenses is more than 7500 or not this will help you to decide if your expenses is less than 7500 or not that's the key question so in summary okay assess the lower of this two method one normal assessment method two rent a room relief rental income received or receivable expenses paid or payable why paid or payable and received or receivable they wrote see i told you default is cash basis question might ask you accrual basis also so accordingly you will see if it's cash basis then on income received if it's accrual basis then receivable if it's cash basis expense paid if it's accrual basis expenses payable okay then you get the profit simple this you know rental room relief also rental part is same income part is same but you deduct a rental room relief which is 7500 and pay on the excess so do calculations and see under which one you are getting the lower profit and choose that one because definitely you want to pay low tax right so you will be choosing the lower profit using both this method so that's it for this lecture now we'll be doing practice objective test questions before we summarize this lecture 
test your understanding three. So here we have to assess the business profit. Take your rent income and deduct the expenses. So she has let it, uh, she has rent her house from 1st of June 2022, having a rent of 600 per month, payable in advance. It's very important whether something is payable in advance or earlier. Okay. Now she paid 900 for repainted, 500 for replacement carpet. Now tell me. So rent received 600 into how many months? You have to take from 1st of June till 1st of April. Okay. So when you are taking, I mean, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, you also have to take the month of April. Why? See, they told it's paid in advance, right? So even though it's April, if you are taking the full month of April, 1st to 30th April, you might say, after 5th of April, it does not come in this tax year, but you are paying in advance. So April payment, you will be doing it in March, right? This is cash basis. So if you are paying in advance, you have to tax it. Okay, if it was paying in area, we will not take the April payment, but April payment will be done in March, one month before. That's why we are taking 11 months, not 10 months. You might calculate from June, till March and say it's 10 months but April also you have to take April payment will be done in June March March payment will be done in Feb like that okay so 600 into 11 and then deduct the expenses so 600 into 11 is 6600 then you can deduct this 900 repair expenses you can claim even the replacement carpet you can which is 5200 so the correct answer is b test your understanding four it's about lease okay 45 year lease premium is 50,000 annual rent is 10,000 payable in advance okay now what do you do so premium is 50,000 deduct the premium okay two percent into fifty thousand into n minus one n is forty five minus one which is forty four thousand so when you deduct fifty from forty four thousand it is six thousand and then you have to add anything you have also received a rent of 10,000. You have to add this 10,000 from that lease to, of 6,000, which becomes 16,000. So your property income is 16,000. Rent plus lease. Test your understanding. Five. This is furnished holiday letting. Okay. How much can they claim as an allowable expense? This is about expense. Okay. So they have rent out of home fully furnished. House does not qualify as a furnished holiday lighting. Remember, if the question specifically tells you that this is qualified or this is not qualified as this, then you have to take that position. You can't test yourself. No, no, no. I will check the 155 days, 210 days, 105 days test and see. No, you can't do it also if you want. See, the question did not give you any number of days. So you can't do. So don't be over smart and waste your time unnecessarily they have already told you it does not qualify okay now you just have to see expenses that you can claim first one interest on loan to acquire property can you do that can you take that we'll keep it insurance new conservatory replacement kitchen equipment this is for a home fully furnished Think. See interest on loan to acquire property. This is not allowed. It's a home fully furnished, not for commercial purpose. If it falls under furnished holiday letting, then it is allowable. This is disallowed. 
what about insurance insurance is allowable 600 you can take new conservatory no it's a capital expenditure replacement kitchen equipment definitely you can take so 600 and 200 800 is the answer b is allowable okay now test your under test your understanding six the last question before we summarize this is for renter room relief i suppose so assuming she elects the most beneficial basis you don't you don't know the most beneficial basis you have to see most beneficial means what which one is giving you the lower profit normal assessment or renter room relief okay so annual rent is this much 8050 and expenses is 450 none of which are capital that means you can deduct so we'll see now doing both the methods so it's more than 7500 so 8050 remember when we are deducting are we deducting 850 and 450 and then taking it from 7500 no gross rent received gross rental received in gross you only have to take the rental received this should be more than you don't deduct the expenses and then decide whether less than 7500 or not so 7500 what is the amount 550 definitely this amount will be less if you just take 8050 and minus 450 the amount will be something in um, 7000 something right so obviously this will be less so the correct answer is b 550 okay so that's it so let's summarize uh, this lecture we started with property income types of income property business profit furnished holiday lettings and renter room relief then basis of assessment is cash which is default otherwise alternative method is accrual basis allowable expenses pool profits and losses then we went through a lease premium where from premium you deduct premium into two percent two percent is fixed and premium will be given to you into n minus one number of lease term minus one which will always be less than 50. alternate method is premium into 51 minus number of lease term divided by 50. you will get the same answer okay just use any one of it and remember the renter room relief which is 7500 is the limit and once you claim renter room relief you can't go back to the normal assessment and if you are going by the normal assessment you can't claim the renter room relief it should be either of the two and for furnished holiday lettings you can't pull it with other property profit a business property why it has its own specific advantages it has the relief like capital rollover relief gift holdover relief like that okay and there are some number of days which you have to see you have to see whether it qualifies as a furnished holiday lettings or not and business property uh, profits and how the losses are carried forward how it needs to be set off and finally calculation using both cash and accrual basis you would need to know even if you might be thinking okay i will just go learning cash basis because that's a default no you have to know what if the alternate comes then you will face a very big trouble so don't put yourself in that situation okay otherwise property income is very easy okay so thus income from employment income from self-employment property income all goes as under non-savings and taxed at the non-savings rate they all go to income tax only for property income whether it is rent whether it is lease whether it is from profits from furnished holiday lettings together you group them and it comes under property income like how income from self-employment they are known as trading income income from employment they are known as employment income okay so we have finished the three major lecture three separate types of income under non-saving non-saving is a very big group okay for savings and dividend we, we finished it in one lecture because there are not so many things like that but for non-saving yes employment self-employment property pre, uh, pension so the next lecture is going to be on pension 
So thank you for watching and do not forget to subscribe to my channel if you are watching my video for the first time and make sure that you watch my previous lectures as well under the taxation playlist. And if you want to assess this PPT slide, go to the above section of my channel, click tax lecture and you can get it. Thank you and take care.